Welcome back to the channel that's filthy. Look at, look at, holy cow, freaking gross. Anyway. <sighs> oh yeah, I can't go back up that way at the fall. All the uh, way down. Nah, I'll just fall right here. <laughs> that was close. <laughs> yep. Anyway. Too bad you weren't like... Uh, inch to the right. I know. Um, one thing I love about Bloodborne, it's also one thing I really love about the first game, or Dark Souls 1. I really need to eat. I feel like I'm going to throw up. This is a... Uh, this person's kind of a... a-hole. Yeah, you can save her, but she doesn't really do much. She gives you antidotes or something. But, um... One thing I love about Bloodborne that I also love about Dark Souls 1 is how, like, each bonfire is important. Yeah, that's true. Like, uh, cause the whole, the whole map is, is, uh, structured around, like, one bonfire. While in Dark Souls, like, 3, or Dark Souls, uh, yeah. Dark Souls 2, it's the worst, I think, in my opinion. Because Dark Souls 2 is just... The way they set up the world in Dark Souls 2 just sucks. <laughs> it's so bad. Um, because, and I feel like that's mostly because What's-His-Face wasn't working on it. Um, it was just a, it was the, just the company from software. Because I think Miyazaki left, or whatever his name is. Um, but... What was I saying? Oh, just the way they 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 made the world like connect to each other is so bad in that game. It just it's just like you go to this poison area, and in the poison area, after you beat it, you go into an elevator that goes up or down. I don't remember which. And now you're in a lava area. The same with Dark Souls One though. Well, Dark Souls Dark Souls One does it better though, because you can like you can see it coming. Right. Oh, what, what, what area are you talking about? Where the dragon uh, clan is. The dragon clan? You, uh, you've never been down there. Uh. So you find this tree. Uh -huh. I was just exploring. I don't even remember how I got there. I found this tree. You go in this tree and there's the mushroom guys. Oh, oh no, no, no. And You're, you go down I, that. I, I saw that because uh, I told you to, where that was. Because <laughs> you have to find two secret uh, doors in a row. Yeah. yeah. No, so that makes, that makes like, there's some parts of it that, yeah, it and just... And then, there's the water place, right next to the beginning, you know, that flooded place with the knights. Yeah. And then you go down underwater, and it's just a room with a little water in it. <laughs> yeah. It's like, they connect, but also they don't... Like, there's, yeah, there's certain spots that are just kind of like, what the, what, what is this? But then, like, for the most part, though, you know where you are relative to other areas in Dark Souls 1. Dark Souls 2, because the world doesn't interlock and, like, connect, it just feels like there's branches of paths you can go, and you have no idea where you are relative to any other area, because they don't connect, and you can't see them. Yeah. Like, the one, one example is uh, at the Hyde's Flame Tower. The one where you where we usually, our first um, farming area with the big giant statue guys. And all the Hyde Knights and are everywhere sitting around. Number two, yeah. Yeah, number two. Um, I can't do, I can't buy anything, I have to go to the first boss. Uh, in, in that area, so you go up to that tower you go across, and then you go into an elevator that goes down. Or no, you know. Yeah. Don't you go into an elevator? No, you go down a spiraling staircase. Yeah. You go through this little, like, fortress little thing. You go deeper, but around the height, around the, um... Not the Heights Fortress. Is it the Heights Fortress? I don't know. I don't the, know. The, around the tower is just water. Like, there's flooded castles and stuff. But then you go down more, and now you're in No Man's Wharf, which is a freaking dock in a mountain. Yeah. But you didn't go, like, over. You just went down. 
So this, so relative to the ocean, you're underwater right now, but you're not. <laughs> it's really, it, Dark Souls 2 is a mess. <laughs> All right, that was my first Souls game, and it it is a hot mess. <laughs> uh, I think I think it's confirmed that they they actually kind of rushed it. They rushed that game because there was supposed to be like like 20 more classes than there were, or not 20, but there was supposed to be like a few more classes than there was, and they had to scrap them because they didn't have enough time to do them. Uh, which is why there's not many classes in that game. And there's only, like, one class that's worthwhile. That's the night class. Yeah. You know, like, there's no reason to do the other classes. I forget how you get up on there. Right now, I don't know how to get to the poison place. I'm so lost. I'm at the spider place. Oh, the poison place? I how I got there. And then... Spider place, you have to go... I already got there. I, I know. Poison. I forget how you get to the spider place. Oh, you have to go through the where the foggy. Yeah. So the poison place, Jackson. You go. You know how you get to the area where we farm the stone guys. Yeah. Well, before you get there, right when you leave Majula, there's oh, this room right. you turn. That's right. I did do that. I remember. And there's uh, the thing with Dark Souls too is that there's not a lot of descriptions well, what you do. Man, I forget how to get there. Uh, Dark Souls 1, I knew, like, oh, this place, I, well, I need to go to this place now. Yeah, so, like, Dark Souls 1, you get less lost because everything feels connected. And there's multiple ways to get to one place. Yeah, that's true. Um, you can get to everywhere within the first fire. Yeah, exactly. I love that. Uh, like, do your bonfire feels, your first bonfire feels part of, like, a part of the world. Yeah. Oh, man. I think you have to go all the way back. Yeah, I think I do. I don't think you're. I don't think I'm supposed to go this way to get to the first boss. This is a shortcut for later. Cause there's a there's an elevator down there. Do I have to activate it now? Let's let's go check. There's, these are the guys I usually farm for uh, vials. This is pretty easy. When they're both coming after you? No. The trick is to get one of them and not the other one. I think I got this guy. No. See ya. Like being Dark Souls 1, I'm playing Dark Souls 2 right now. Then I might do Dark Souls 3 and actually record Dark Souls 3. What was I talking about with Dark Souls 2 just barely? Ew, that it's weird. I don't know why I just do that. Dang it. Ow! Oh, okay. <laughs> I swear, I haven't played this game in years. Like, legitimately. <laughs> there we go. What the? Why did you? Okay. Nope. Okay. Probably gonna die. Gender are you? I'm a girl. I, most Dark Souls games I play as a guy, but this one I play as a girl. It just feels like, because the outfits are just... Uh, on guys. They just look feminine on guys. That, and like, I feel like the, the narrative in this one, it like, it feels better if I'm a girl for the narrative. Like, it just, it just feels more right. I don't know. I don't like the clothes look Gosh, on guys. Gosh, freaking dang you. Yeah, cl these clothes look very strange. Are you kidding me? Like, this is so easy to do. <laughs> and I'm just screwing it up. Anyway. Yeah, I'll probably go stop with the lantern before I do this. I'll probably go to the boss, at least. Because uh, you can totally skip the boss. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so yeah, you have to you have to go up and find the elevator, go down, and then you go. And this is a shortcut for the second boss, um, Yarnum or whatever his name is, G Girahim. Uh, but there's something I was gonna say about Dark Souls 2. Oh, the difficulty of Dark Souls 2 isn't the same. 
it doesn't feel like a Dark Souls game. Well, it feels like Dark Souls game is it, it is one. But, like, the enemies don't feel like it. Because in Dark Souls 1, it's challenging, but, like, fair. And in the few times that there is, like, an ambush, it's a manageable ambush. Like, when you first encounter it, it's not. Because it's just a surprise. But in Dark Souls 2, when there's an ambush, they just throw, like, 15 guys that are really hard to kill at you for no reason. <laughs> just, just so it's hard. <laughs> And that's how I feel that they treated the, the difficulty of Dark Souls 2. They just throw more and more people at you. They don't get like a challenging uh, creature to fight you. They just get more creatures to fight you. Yeah. And you can kind of see that in the bosses. Like they're the, one of the bosses at the very beginning of the game, you fight again later in the game, but there's two of them. Or you fight the, uh, the Lost Bastille Knights. Uh, I forget what they're called. The Watchmen or whatever. No, that's in this game. Uh, you you fight three of them, and then they become a normal enemy later on in the game. Uh, and that's just kind of how that game feels. It just throws a bunch of a bunch of creatures at you, uh, so it's un like it's just so it's hard. But it doesn't capture the same feeling of why the first game was challenging, or why bosses were challenging in the first game. Uh, or why the first game was fun. I, in my opinion, Dark Souls 2, I, here's the thing, Dark Souls 2, I hate and love it because since it was my first Souls game, I died a lot. And there's parts of the game that I gotta see a lot. <laughs> like, I hate the Majula theme because I, like, would always hang out at Majula all the time. And... So now I just like, because I'd be like afraid to leave because I didn't want to lose my souls or I didn't want to die Baby. or whatever. Yeah, I'd just, I just, it was like my, one. it was like my safe spot. Imagine Dark Souls 1, Jared. Level 125 takes a million souls to upgrade and you're only 900,000, 900,000 souls. Yeah. You have to go out and get it. Well, that, that was the thing. So the thing that really helped me in that game was I found out there was a ring in that original version. Yeah. There's a ring that you can put on. Oh, fetch. I can't go this way. How do you get... I can't remember how you get to the... Oh, I am so stupid. There's a door somewhere. I'm dumb. I'll just go this way, though. Actually, no, I don't want to go this way. This way sucks. Ah, oh, bitch. Is there a way to go back to the your lantern? I don't think you have a homework phone. Yeah, I do. Oh. <laughs> uh. Can I just use it? You equipped I have it. To equip it, I guess. There we go. Yes. Okay. There is a way to get back. I, I was just an idiot. I'm just wasting everyone's time. Wow, Jerry. Talking about freaking Dark Souls 2. Dark Another thing Souls. I hate about Dark Souls 2, I hate the story. So the whole reason why you're going there, in the original version, okay, not in the not in the um, not in Scarlet for Sin. Oh, whoops! I just hit that. Hey, mm. told me that. Okay. Uh, so in the in the original game, your character goes to um, Dringwick to cure his undead. To cure himself. Yeah. Well, in the original version of the game, you don't cure yourself. And all of a sudden, at the end of the game, you just link the flame, the fire. It doesn't explain what the fire does. Uh, actually, maybe there is a character that does explain that. But, like, there's no relevance to the fire throughout the whole game. No one cares until the end. And all of a sudden, oh, you get a link to fire or whatever uh, out of nowhere. It's absolutely bizarre, in my opinion. See, there's, there's a way up here. I was an idiot. There's these dogs over there. I do not want to aggro because they suck. Wait, um, isn't this the boss? 
Yeah. But then in the Skull of First Sin, they actually fixed that a little bit, I guess. Are you freaking... Sometimes. Sometimes this game... Makes me mad. Okay. I guess, um... Eh, we'll fight it this episode. We haven't done anything this episode except for except for complain about um, Dark Souls 2. It, so, Dark Souls 2 does fix that, or the Skull First thing does fix that with the DLC, I guess. Because the DLC makes so you can cure your undeadness. I hope I don't die to this guy. I've never died to this guy, but since I'm recording it, I'll probably die. Three is uh, probably my favorite Dark Souls game. My favorite Soulsborne game, probably not. I think this game probably is. I just love this game. The combat in this is like way more refreshing than Dark Souls, just because Dark Souls feels like slower paced because it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be like more thought and. Uh... Oh my gosh. I rolled right into that, even though I'm pretty sure it locks on to me. I think you can, um, I want to say you can make this boss stagger. I don't remember how. There we go. I'm not doing as much damage as I usually do at this boss because usually I have the uh, the saw. I think that does more damage. Oh my gosh. How? Okay, I'm gonna switch back to the. Okay, now I can, now I can, there we go. Yeah, so uh, one thing I like about this bo these bosses in this game is that if you hit certain body parts, that body part will like break, and then that opens it up for a... Okay, dodge that one. with it, but maybe I did. I thought you were a pro. No, I suck at these games. Ooh, that was close. I think that was a grab. Grabs. If you ever played any Dark Souls game, you know grabs are bad. Bad deal. Oh, I might die. I remember I did use a lot of blood vials in this boss every time, so I guess... I also... Okay, I do lock on to, like, every boss, so... And I know most people don't, because it does kind of suck. 
used to Dark Souls. Well, yeah, but like, even in Dark Souls, people don't lock on every boss. Just because it makes it harder in some circumstances. Because it just messes the camera up. It makes it way harder to hit him. And this is actually when I learned, when I first played the game, that you can get your health back by hitting things. In speedruns, they actually beat this boss, or at least the one I saw, he beat this boss, like, way later. Actually, locking on does have a downside. Uh, it makes it so you can't you can't roll. You can only dash. Which, once you get used to it, it's not that big of a deal. But it will be a little jarring at first. Okay, two files left. You want to get behind this boss because. There's not really any attacks that hit you if you're behind it. Ow. In fact, I like to trigger its, uh, its leap attack, that one. It's really easy to dodge. Ah, I can't see. I'm trying to dodge. Or actually, it wasn't that one. It's this one. What the heck was that? Gear. Just got freaking... Ow. I just feel. Yeah. Got him. Yeah, dude. First try. Yep. Awesome. I've never died that, that boss, and I really didn't want to. All right. Four so, hunter. we'll end the episode there. I'm going to go level up. Uh... Stay frosty, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't come up with an outro yet. I probably should. Probably. Anyway, see you on the flip side.